first and foremost, I want to define, I want to give my definition of what celibacy is. So because that word has so many different definitions, it can cause confusion because celibacy has been talked about in the Catholic Church. It has been talked about um, connected to other religions as well. It has been talked about uh, with those like who do not desire marriage. So for me and my journey, I do desire marriage. I do plan on getting married one day. So when I speak about celibacy, I'm talking about the context of not having sex. That's it. That's what we're talking about, not having sex. Um, and I wanted to give that so that there was clarity in that as well. So my journey has, it's been seven and a half years. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. There's been some ups and downs and all of that. But there are a lot of things that I learned out of this journey. There are a lot of things that have been really transformed who I am, transform how I think, the way I act. All of these pieces are connected. Uh, that's why I believe that this journey is so important uh, for, for people, you know, just in general. It doesn't matter, you know, what what your religion is, all of those things. This is a journey towards wholeness, essentially. Um, so I just want to share that with you all. So like I said, I started uh, seven and a half years ago. And, you know, the things that shape us are just like life experiences that happen. And so I was really in a place of, uh, you know, low self-esteem, struggling with low self-worth. And I took those attributes into like relationship after relationship. I would say I was definitely one of those people who uh, value relationships. So when I was in one, it was like a long-term relationship. We were together for some years. That was my man. I was his girl. All of those things. But uh, in hindsight, I became a chameleon in those relationships, uh, taking on the characteristics of who that person wanted me to be in the relationship. So there was a lack of identity in that and knowing who I was, uh, really valuing myself. And so with that sort of dynamic, you kind of just go with the flow and go for anything. And it wasn't until being in this journey uh, that I began to heal in that area of identity. Like, because please understand the D, it will, it'll cloud all this. It'll cloud your judgment. Um, you'll start making decisions out of the wrong vein, essentially. You'll start making decisions that are, aren't actually beneficial for you as an individual. And so that's where I was. And taking a step back really allowed me to see for the first time. You know, I wasn't making uh, decisions hastily or making them just out of the wrong vein. I could actually clearly see that, man, that's not good for me or I really don't need to pursue that, you know. And so I know sometimes people kind of feel like, oh, that's lonely, da, 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 da. Um, it's important to spend some time alone by yourself, not, not in a relationship, so you can really get to know you. And because I thought I knew me and I, I truly did not. And even if you feel like, man, I know who I am. There are some areas in your life that need healing. So when we interact with people from a broken place, those interactions are not the same as if we would have interacted from a place, a healed place and a healed perspective. That's two different things. And so I had to learn that. So I'm in relationships and I'm literally bleeding on people. Um, you'll see characteristics like, uh, well, I'll describe my characteristics. Like I was extremely, extremely, extremely needy, you know, and you think about what was under that. Was there some sort of abandonment issues that I was dealing with uh, deep down inside that caused that sort of um uh, activity to arise you know so there's always an underlying thing that's there that is causing you to act in whatever manner that you're acting in um so i in my journey i begin to um dig deeper right dig deeper into who i was i am a licensed therapist i believe in the power of therapy i believe in the power of you know just working on yourself getting yourself together so that you literally can present yourself 
whole in a relationship don't you want your, that other person to come to you whole and i mean whole like uh mentally you know stable emo stable in their emotions um those sorts of things obviously there may be other things that are on your uh, desire list but wholeness is is is, is definitely important uh, because when we live out of that vein, it kind of just aligns the the definitely the eight dimensions of our lives. So that is important. And so that's what I feel like the work that I have been charged to do in the world is literally to take people's hands and walk them through wholeness, allow them to see um, maybe things that they haven't discovered about themselves. Like for instance, for me, it was maybe five years ago that I really saw the depths of um, the absence of my father, how that impacted the relationships I was in. You know, that lens not feeling ever affirmed by my father. And as a little girl, it is important, even statistically, statistics will say, um, it is important for girls, for people, you know, kids to be affirmed by their fathers. And so because I was not, it impacted me. Um, the fruit of that was um, some self-esteem issues, some low self-worth, those sorts of things were the fruit of that. And begin to think about, okay, how does someone who has low self-esteem act in a relationship? And those were the dynamics of many of the relationships I was in. So to see that, it gave me something, okay, this is what I need to focus on in therapy. This is what I need to uh, work towards improving in that area. Uh, so it'll give you real life things to actually focus on to better yourself. So here I am seven and a half years later and the confidence that I exude is like no other. You know, many of the things I do, uh, the way that I carry myself now, literally night and day literally night and day so i'm telling you this thing this journey will transform you and that's the purpose of it it is to transform you so that you can be uh, essentially a better you you know presenting a better you to the world and honestly i love myself so much more i you know just that self-love that i did not uh previously have that's super duper important so all of those things they really intertwine and go together. <laughs> and so I talked about um, just the clarity of mind, the clarity to be able to make decisions wisely when um, sex is not in the way, you know? Uh, and I'm not saying that's not something that uh, you, you don't desire, you know, as a human, your body does desire that. Uh, but in this season, your season of singleness and your season of just like preparing yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, um, in that season of preparing yourself, you have to be build discipline, right? And so discipline was not something that happened overnight. Discipline was literally practice for me. And so I had to keep uh, one day at a time, I had to keep trucking. Each day kind of adds up to be seven and a half years later. And my focus, it, there was intentionality on my focus. My focus was, man, I I gotta heal uh, because I want to, I wanna love someone from a healed place and not from this skewed perspective, not from my place of trauma, right? Um, when you are operating with a, a trauma brain, uh, there's a lot of anxiety surrounding that and a lot of anxiety about the future, a lot of anxiety about, you know, just the next move. Uh, but when you allow healing to take place and you begin to live in the here and now and begin to realize that my past doesn't dictate my future and um, it shifts how you move. You know, there were a lot of things that I wasn't uh, doing because of fear, because of trauma, because of past experiences. And let's be real, fear is not from God. Fear is not from God. Fear will literally hinder you. It's like your feet, it's like cinder blocks on your feet. Fear will not allow you to move and do. 
And so honestly, I really never saw myself going back to school at all. That was like not in the cards. That was crazy. I, I was the person that cried the last semester of my master's program because it was just so hard. I'm working full time. I'm a, a full time mom. It was a lot going on. So a fear really hindered me from moving on going back to school. But when I did, when I finally did and got over that, the doors that opened, the purpose that opened for that. And so I could have been that person that just, just kind of cycled in my thoughts. Well, like, what if this or no, nah, I can't do that because of X, Y, and Z. So fear will literally cripple you. Right. And I and I'm sure many, many of us have experienced fear in many areas of our lives, but really that um our thinking, our judgment, the cloudiness, it has to be cleared so that we can make decisions from the vein of like, I'm about to do this anyway, because not doing it is not going to yield the fruit um, that I want to see in my life. So this celibacy journey has really uh, disciplined me to be me, to go after my full purpose. And I really want that for everybody seeing this video. I believe that I am charged, that is part of my purpose in life, to literally walk others through wholeness, walk others through, um, you know, just the opposition that you feel like you're experiencing in your life because there is another side of this. As a, And I believe that's why, part of the reason why I went into therapy. I'm a licensed therapist and I truly believe this. I truly believe this. So I'll be sharing more uh, on my journey my journey of celibacy, my journey towards heal, healing and wholeness and hopes that you you can just take one nugget from something that I'm saying and apply it to your life. So that's really the purpose of this series, which is my celibacy journey. And I just can't wait to share more with you. Talk to you soon.